What are the summer run salmon fishing hotspots here on the upper Columbia River is Wells Dam. You can see it in the background here and I'll tell you what, when the salmon are running, a lot of boats make the run to fish right below the dam. Now, we're gonna be meeting up with Austin Mosier. He's a guide up here on the Upper Columbia. And we're gonna launch right up below the dam down here and give you kind of the short story on how to go about fishing for summer on salmon below the dam. This is also known as a good steelhead spot, but it's summer, it's hot, and the salmon are pouring upstream. And I wanna show you how to approach summer on salmon fishing at Wells Dam. Now I said at Wells Dam because summer on salmon season opens July 1st here on the Upper Columbia. Oftentimes when that date hits we are in the midst of heavy runoff and it can be difficult to impossible to fish in the currents below Wells Dam. They've certainly settled out now, and usually by the second or third week of the month, it starts to settle down, and certainly by toward the end of July, and certainly by August, it's in great fishing shape. On July 17th every year, the area above the dam opens to salmon fishing. From here, Wells Dam to the first bridge at Bridgeport, just north of Brewster is closed to salmon fishing to allow the escapement of the run of salmon up the Madhau River. But then it opens on the 17th and above the dam can also be a very good place to troll for summer run kings. So that's what it looks like from this vista point and I'm going to show you what it looks like when we're fishing right below Wells Dam for summer run kings. Dave, I guess one thing to talk about coming down here is if you don't know where you're going, it might be kind of hard to find. It is, you know, and it's something I just forget about. I mean, the, I think the truck knows the way. It's been down here so many times, either for salmon or steelhead. But uh, you can kind of follow the signs once you get to uh, the Wells Dam sign that takes you into the rest area. I'm going to say we're probably at roughly 60 miles north of Wenatchee on uh, the Chelan County side and we're south of uh, Pateras by about oh, 15 miles something like that to give you a reference if you're going to look at a map and uh, you can come up this way on the Douglas County side of the Columbia River and you pass over the BB Bridge to get here or you can come up on the Chelan County side and go through Chelan and hit the highway there at the bottom of the hill at Chelan Falls. I'm standing now here at the foot of the boat ramp here at Wells Dam. As you can see, it's a nice concrete structure surrounded by some pretty heavy river, river rock. And uh, actually this, uh, today, the water's up and it's way up the ramp. And one thing people should be aware of is the level on the Columbia changes drastically. And you really have to be aware of the water levels. When you are putting in and taking out, you, you want to get your boat positioned uh, I made the mistake once of leaving my boat here uh, next to the ramp while I went up and cleaned the fish. Well, the water dropped to the point where I was very, very lucky to get my boat off the rocks. So you want to put in and take out quickly when you're here at Wells because the levels do fluctuate. And from here, Looking off the ramp, I can see the carcasses of many salmon, which is a good sign. I also, in the distance, just at the mouth 
of the launch area, I've heard and seen a couple of nice uh, salmon roll. And what we'll do is we'll go from here down around the corner and there is a deadline out here where you can't go above uh, in a, just below the launch here and you should be aware of that that there is a deadline sign up on this bank and you're not allowed to fish above that uh, there's three or four boats working off the bar here right now and i can see fish rolling out in the middle right now too uh, in addition to the summer on salmon of course sockeye pass through here and can be here in good numbers as well on the far side of the river many people just run out go around the corner and set up and troll off of this bar but another popular area is straight across the river from here and there's a very large eddy and you might be able to oh there was a big fish rolled right there you can see some yellow uh, buoys at the top end of that next to the shore and uh, trolling in that eddy can also be a very productive area here at Wells Dam. So hopefully we can contribute to this uh, pile of carcasses <laughs> that I'm seeing on the bottom here today and uh, really looking forward to having Austin Mosier meet us here and show you some of the tactics and techniques that work for summer run salmon and sockeye here at Wells Dam. Well now we're at the launch again here at Wells Dam. We're in this beautiful boat of Austin Mosier's of Austin's Northwest Adventures. And uh, this guy is gonna show us the ropes below Wells Dam. And I really appreciate Austin you taking your time and getting us out here and showing people the ropes. You know, basically where to go, how to do it, the kind of rigs you prefer and the tackle you prefer for fishing for kings. But you know what we're gonna do? <laughs> we're gonna start off catching sockeye. You think we can make that happen? Yeah, we got a pretty good shot at it. There's yeah. a lot of sockeye going over the dam right now, so I think it should be good. Yeah, now to do that, we're probably gonna run across to the Big Eddy on the other side. Yep, exactly, the East Bank. The East Bank seems to be where those sockeye like to hang. And it's gonna be real interesting to see what size the sockeye are this year and just kind of what kind of rigs they seem to prefer. So we're ready to go. We're going to jump in the boat, head across right below Wells Dam to the eddy on the far side and start off with sockeye fishing this afternoon. The goal of battery systems is to provide the best products combined with the most efficient service at competitive prices. I've found their people live up to this, so don't buy anything without talking to them. You should make their batteries and accessories your choice to power your vehicles and boats. This is Dave Graybill, and I choose battery systems to keep me running on shore and on the water. To find a battery systems product expert in a location near you, log on to batterysystems.net. When you're fishing in Banks Lake, Lake Roosevelt, even Rufus Woods, the place to stay is at Cooley Playland in Electric City. They have camping and RV hookups right on the water. There's a launch with fuel and one of the best tackle shops in the area. You can get your state and tribal fishing licenses right there. Cooley Playland has been the friendly place to stay for fishermen for decades, and if you haven't camped there yet, you'll learn why. Call for reservations at 509-633-2657. Be sure to visit their website at cooleyplayland.com. The Evan Root E-Tech. It's a dream come true. For E-Tech engine sales and service and repair of all boats and motors, call Lyle's Boats and Motors in Kashmir. 663-5191. Hi, you are not going to believe this. I bought Pepsi Next. What's Pepsi Next? It's the new cola from Pepsi. It's got real cola taste, but 60% less sugar. Real cola taste. 60% less sugar. Mmm. 
Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I know. It's unbelievable. <laughs> but this is the most impressive mm. thing I've ever experienced in my entire life. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Look at the camera. <laughs> I've never had anything like it. <laughs> my parents are going to fly. Yeah, they're going to be so proud. Introducing Pepsi Next. Now everybody kind of has their favorite rig for sockeye and they're always being developed. And why don't you share with us uh, the kind of rig that you like to use out here, Austin? Okay, so I like to use this, uh, the, uh, the Dodger, the big Dodger, uh, with the chrome on both sides. Uh, and I like a 13 inch leader. Yep. I'm running uh, 25 pound tests, uh, big game on it right now. Um, later on in the fall, well, not the fall, but later on in August when we get more kings in, I'll bump it up to like 40 pound liter. Yeah. Because we get a lot of kings on these. Exactly. But uh, 13 inch liter, I'm using the larger, uh, I think it's a 1.8 uh, smile blade. And that uh, nice bright pink too. Yeah, That's pink a good chrome. color. Pink and chrome. And then I really like these, uh, I think these are Ace High Fly. Uh, Hoochies, little Hoochies. mini Hoochies. Yep, yeah, with glow beads. Um, you put two glow beads. Well, let's see. You got one. You got two, two glow beads in the middle. Okay. And I'm running two big river hooks with the barbs pinched. Big river hooks. Okay. Do you like those because they've got a nice gap? I like them because the the crook in the bottom of it here. Oh, it's different. It uh, it's like a sickle style hook. Okay. It seems to hold the fish on better. Uh, and they're extremely sharp. It's one of the sharpest hooks I've ever had right out of the package. Then I put a little crystal flash on there and a rubber glow bead just to hold it on. And you slide your hoochie over it. Very nice. There you go. It's got good action in the water. I'll show you that. Can you see it there? Yep. Yeah, it's neat the way that oscillating smile really makes it dance, doesn't it? It sure does. Nice. Great action. Then you just put a small shrimp on the hook and you're in business. Yep, that's it. Get the shrimp out now and we'll get started. Oh, right, I can't wait. Sockeye fishing at Wells Dam. Austin, you got all these uh, rods. You got them uh, in the water. How deep and how fast are we trolling? Uh, we are going about one mile an hour, 1.1 mile an hour. And I'm running them 20 feet behind the ball. And I'm running, uh, I got that one at eight feet deep. And I got that one at 10 feet deep and that one at 12 feet deep. Once I find where the fish are, then I'll uh, move them all accordingly. And they'll all be at the same depth. All using about the same kind of setup or each with a little bit of a different twist? Uh, pretty much the same setup. Uh, the flashes are a little bit different. Um, I got one, one's got chrome on on both one's chrome on one side and a plaid pattern on the other I got two of those and then I got one that's uh, that's chrome with a uh, with a hammered uh, sticker on it uh, I like them both the one is a different brand of, of flasher it has a little different wiggle to it but they're all working so um, I have a glow-in-the-dark one that I'll run in the evening sometimes green and glow and I caught a lot of fish on that a couple weeks ago so if you get a uh, cloudy sky do you change your presentation on the flashers not on the flashers so much uh, sockeye seem to to bite about any kind of thing you can put in their face as long as you can get it in their face uh, pinks is always good and chrome flashers is great low light conditions you can use glow flashers but even even just chrome ones work fine okay Sometimes I play with the size of flasher. I got some one size smaller that I run, which is a, a medium size. I think they're a double lot. 
And the bigger ones are the single lot. You've been catching the sockeye so far this year. You were talking about how you actually caught some earlier today. What kind of size are you seeing this year? They're a little bit smaller this year than they were last year. They're, they're actually kind of all over the board. We're getting them from 12 inches all the way up to 22 inches. So um, we got a couple of them that were probably four and a half pounds. And we got a couple of them that are just little guys like this, you know. And those are the ones you fight extra long with these barbless hooks because, you know, they might come off on accident. I'd be tempting to, tempted to bring my coconut gear here with some shoot pig corn. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, you could do that. Uh, but then when you rip into a, about a 15 or a 20 pound king, uh, you could be have a battle on your hands. So, it's good stuff. Yeah, it had to be some. No. <laughs> Got him? Yep. Take this one. Oh, it came off. Oh, good. I don't feel so bad now. Same spot. Same exact spot as last time. Dang. Oh, that's a trout. It is. Or is that a jack? It's a jack. Well, I don't even know if I can call that a jack. <laughs> well, it's a black mouth, ain't it? Yeah. Oh. Don't I don't think that will lay down. Hey, I see that one. That's a good one. All of a sudden, fight! Hold this down, dude. Down towards the water. Got it right here above you. Above you. Oh. We're gonna get one of these in. <laughs> Looks like real, a keeper. Real, real, real. Yeah. <laughs> real, real, real. Lift him up, straight up. Straight up, straight up. Uh. God. Hey! <laughs> Boy, that is something to celebrate tonight. Wow. <laughs> That's not a bad fish either. That's, That's a, good a pretty sign. good one. Yeah. What do you think about that one? You want to keep her? Yeah. That's a box, huh? Okay. Good eater. Well, Dave, you finally made it happen. Finally. <laughs> That's really fun, though. When you get action that fast. Yeah. That's just great fun. And there we go. We're off to a start on our... Sockeye limit. Beauty. That sure is a pretty fish. The way they shine in the sun and everything. Yeah. You keep her dig. <laughs> He's nice one. <laughs> Sailfish. Oh, that was good. <laughs> a little scarred up. Yeah. Go to sleep. Okay. Look, it's my little spinning glow ring. Oh, yeah, too. it sure does. That's the That's one I made. Uh, well, that guy was what? We were going to shake that Good deal. Nicely done. Did you play with cross or something? The way you netted that fish, I thought you <laughs> used to uh, play with the net on the end of the No, I, I've been doing that a lot. I did that with a 25 pound king uh, in the derby last year with Calvin. It oh jumped. my God. We fought it for like a half a mile and it jumped right at the boat and I just scooped him right out of the air. Hi, I'm Dave Grayville, the Fish and Magician, and I'm sitting in front of the Lake Pateras Inn. Lake Pateras Inn is one of the most convenient places you can stay if you like to fish for salmon or steelhead on the upper columbia river you can moor your boat at the dock or there are two ramps within yards they have outdoor power so you can charge your electric motor rooms are clean and comfortable 
and very affordable. Everything you need is right here at the Lake Pateras Inn. We live in an area that's just made for boating fun, and to enjoy it, you need to stop by Bob File Boats and Motors in East Wenatchee. They have a hundred new boats in stock, and they have the best used boat inventory in Eastern Washington. From 28-foot cruisers to 6-foot dinghies, they have the boat to fit your needs. They welcome trade-ins, too. See what they have to offer by visiting their website at bobfileboats.com. Bob File Boats and Motors, we're dealing. Bob File's got to make you smile. Gaboon Productions LLC is a full-service video production company right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Gaboon is a term coined by my grandfather, commercial fishing in Alaska. It's when a bunch of fish hit your net all at the same time. We capture life as you see it. From filming those special moments to catching something big, Gaboon Productions LLC can record it, edit it, and save it for you forever. We do weddings, theater productions, concerts, reunions, commercials, and more. Go to GaboonProductions.com on the web, check us out on Facebook, and on YouTube. Gaboon Productions LLC, the little video company capturing your big moments. All right, Austin, now when you're out here, you're getting rigged up to do some serious king fishing now. And what is your preferred method? What, let's start off with your baits. What kind of baits do you like to run? I like to run uh, super baits. Mm -hmm. uh, the cut plug super bait has been working really well this year. Okay. It seems like it kind of changes from year to year. Uh, I really like the uh, the cut plug with the action that it has. And, and we're barbas hook now. So yeah. I'm running Gamagatsu big river hooks with pinched barbs. But they're a sickle hook and they hold the fish a little better. Right. And you, you can see the same I, kind of rig you're using on those sockeye. Exactly. It's it's that sickle hook is something I started using kokanee fishing this year. Right. Works so well. Same with me. Yeah. So basically, it's a big kokanee rig. Yeah. I run the hooks this close together, and uh, they get both boats in the mouth. Nice. Um, so I always tell people to start with a green and a red. Those are your go-to colors. Mm -hmm. uh, if you put these little pink beads on here, sometimes the sockeye will bite it too. I've been noticing that. I'll be darned. <laughs> so, now, so, how long a liter would you put on that, and what pound cap? Um, I'm running about five foot liters, and I'm running 40 pound, 40 pound mono. Right. Uh, just because you know you get, they got big teeth, and you get boats in close, and you got to horse them in sometimes to keep them out of the other boats. Gotcha. So, uh, the green and the red work great. Uh, once I figure out what they really want that day, I'll put it all out, all exactly. the same. Gotcha. Uh, I run five foot liters. Huh? Um, when I get a real fast current, I'll, I'll run them a little longer, 16 okay. inch liter. All right. Um, most of the time, about five foot liters. Because those are going on behind a pretty good size flasher. Yep, Pro Troll flasher with the uh, fin on it and the E-chip. Um, you can troll them down to one mile an hour and they still spin. Great flashers. I love the chrome flashers. Uh, what I really like about the chrome flashers is I can add whatever colors I want to them and still have the chrome. This is a little bit of glow for in the morning. And uh, I really like the chrome flashers. They're good nice as a producer. Just add some uh, tape to add some contrast. Yeah, good to go. Early in the mornings, I run these. These are glow flashers. Okay. So I use a camera flash and I flash them. And as well as the super baits. I'll run different super baits. Early in the morning I run different uh, different um, patterns. Yeah. I have some that are all glow. The whole thing glows. Yes. The cow, the spotted cow, and, and the herringbone. Yeah. But these ones themselves actually glow on the belly too. So you can right. shine them and flash them on the belly. So run a little garlic this year. It's been, been a garlic year. So Good now and again the idea of these super baits, they got that rubber band on the back of them, and do you add uh, tuna or anything to them? I do, I do. I, uh, I put tuna and oil inside of the cavity, and I put uh, whatever scent flavors that I want to. The tuna itself catches fish, or 
The tuna itself works as a medium to put your scents into. Right. And you say garlic's been kind of a, a yep, good Yeah, garlic's been good, good this year. That's uh, good. Garlic and, mm -hmm. and I like that original flavor of the dipping sauce. That one's been working for me really well, too. That's great. It worked the best for me last year. Yeah. So. Don't like running garlic. It's kind of smelly, but you got to do what you got to do to catch exactly. fish, right? The fish like it. <laughs> if they like it, you'll run it. That's right. Exactly. So I'll get these guys ready and we'll start fishing. Well, Austin, I notice you're wearing surgical gloves and I'm seeing a lot more guys doing that. Are you, is that to protect your scent? What do you got going on there? I'm a big proponent of rubber gloves. I think it takes an element out of, out of your uh, game, you know. It, it just eliminates problems. Just like sharpening hooks. When you're, uh, you know, you get gas, uh, you, um, you know, you're using certain garlic scents and stuff like that and you decide you want to change baits and you don't want that in your hands. Uh, I run a lot of Lemon Joy. We wash our hands regularly. I even wash my gloves. Um, the human scent uh, fish don't like um, and it's different for every person. Some people have more of that scent that they don't like than others. But I just, uh, I just prefer wearing gloves plus it protects my hands. Yeah, and there's fuel in the boat. You know, you start a new motor, you squeeze the ball, now you got fuel in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in the in the wintertime, they keep your hands a little warm too. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> so, okay, what we have here is what's going to go inside the super bait. And so you've got a tub, and you, what you you've got any kind of cheap tuna in oil. Exactly. Is that right? That's yep. the basic ingredient. That's it? right. Okay, that's what you start with. Right. And then uh, I put about a quarter cup, uh, depending on the day. Sometimes I put more, sometimes I put less of this. Uh, this is the sauce that's been working the last day or two. Uh, it's the herring sauce. Okay. And then I add uh, about two tablespoons of this garlic to it, and it just gives it a little extra kick. Because if you put that in 100%, it's just, woo. It's real strong, and, and, and I don't want to overpower it. You know, I, yeah. I work my way up with that. There you stuff. go. Add more if necessary. I don't like getting it all over my boat either, so. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been running this Slamola powder. It's got some bite enhancers in it, and uh, it's got garlic in it as well. Okay. I put about uh, two or three tablespoons of that in there. Right. Looks good. Just mix her all up, and yep. Then I just take it, and I... Uh, Put it in these super baits. Pull the rubber band off. Set it aside. Kind of mix it up because the oil will float up to the top. Put a big ball in the back and leave it open here so you can close it good. Just wipe off the edges. Flip it up. That's it. Ready, Ready to, to run. Go. Nice. So, okay. That's the basics. It's kind of messy, but it works. It stays on the hook a lot longer than herring, I can tell you that. Yeah, it does. You can control right. a lot faster. You can do all kinds of spins and yeah. dips and dives. That's a benefit of these hard baits. Is, yeah, they just don't tear off the hook. That's right. Okay, Austin, now you're locked and loaded, and we're trolling for kings. And I love the way you've got these set up. you got a nice array out there. you got the big flashers going, the super baits, a couple of different colors, some of your favorites to start off with. Right. And we're over here on uh, the opposite side of the below the dam from the ring. And we're over here where the big eddy is. And you're just going to be making some circles through here. Right. And is there a kind of a, a depth that you like to maintain when you're against the shore over here? Uh, my best depth, and I've caught most of my fish, about 80 to 90 percent of my fish is 15 feet. Okay. Uh, I have bottom trackers now, so I'll play with it a little bit, but when I didn't have bottom trackers, I ran 15 feet all the time. Right. Um, now you're 15 feet down right. on your riggers, and how much water is below you? It, it varies in here a lot. It'll yeah. go from 22 feet down to about uh, 45 feet, and then it'll be 60 feet on the point. Four, exactly. You know, 40, 50, 60, 30, yeah. all over the place. That's why we stick with one, one depth at 15 foot. Right. And that's one thing that he mentioned earlier, is there's some ridges along the shoreline. And then you'll go up and you'll hit that point, and like he says, it's 60 feet deep. So yeah, we're all over the place. 
I like to run out of it while I'm going to set up. I go right in the middle of this eddy, and you can just kind of sit there. Right. You get everything rigged up, and then yeah. and then you've got to kind of join the parade a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't have very many people here today. I'm really surprised. I am surprised too. But that's one thing that people should be aware of. If they're all going one way, go that way. Yep. Do everybody a favor. And that's just, right. Keep your spacing and your speeds and everything the same and everybody will have a good time. Boat control is a huge thing in this in this game and it yeah. makes life a lot easier when people cooperate with everybody and you all work together to get your fish. Exactly. Now and that's even more important on the other side where you oftentimes you're dealing with some pretty stiff currents. Yeah. You get people right below you. That's why I run really heavy lines so I can winch the fish in and try to keep them out of the people below you but generally everybody will reel their balls up and get out of your way and you'll just let your motor idle down and you drift down and get out of their way too exactly instead of trying to fight a fish right in the middle of their group you just kind of either power out of the group or you drift down and, and get off to the side right um, now on that opposite side when you're fishing right off of that bar are you trying to get out into 15 to 17 feet of water there or even deeper 20 so you can run at 15? Yeah, I generally over there I run about 18 feet deep. Okay. Uh, sometimes I'll bottom track that over there four feet off the bottom. Uh, but I like to stay in that 25 foot water and, and work it back towards the shore into that 12 feet of water. Okay. That's what I like to do. If you get too far down over there the current will blow you out. So you gotta stay that's, on the upper end. That's right. And is there a particular speed now over there? Or are you just kind of maintaining it? It all depends on the current, doesn't it? Well, it definitely it. does. Uh, I'm not one to back troll much. Yeah. I will run these super baits three miles an hour. Yeah. I catch fish at three miles an hour. Uh huh. But I'll do if there's not a lot of people around. I'll bob and I'll weave and I'll zig and I'll zag and the outside rod's faster than the inside rod and and okay. I get a lot of hits that way. It's kind of like Bernita fishing. You know, it's fast down there all the time. And right. So that's kind of where I, that's where I work the best. Good. In the fast current. Right. So, well, and fish are caught on both sides of this river. I know certain people have preferences from one side to the other. And I myself has always liked to fish this eddy side because as you say, you get everything rigged and ready, you know, you get everything set and you can just kind of pound away at it. That's right. You Once know? you get the poles down, then you can drive. Exactly. That's <laughs> great. No one is happy about having to repair a vehicle after an accident. However, I was very happy when I chose First Choice Collision Center when I needed this service. I can't say enough about how they treated me. Fast and friendly just doesn't say enough. They have amazing technology to make a damaged vehicle look like new. At First Choice Collision Center, you can expect modern service with old-fashioned values. That was my experience, and I'm sure it will be yours too. No matter where anglers are heading, whether it's Banks Lake, Lake Roosevelt, or Rufus Woods Reservoir, they all make the same stop. That's at Big Wally's in Cooley City. Here they find everything they need for a successful day on the water. Fuel, ice, a tackle shop, and people who know what they're selling behind the counter. State and tribal licenses, even a hot breakfast or lunch. When you're on the go, don't forget to stop at Big Wally's and visit their website at BigWallysFishing.com. Hooked on toys! Summer on salmon season is in full swing now, and you're not fishing right if you don't have a good selection of colors of the Superbait and Superbait Plug Cut lures. More salmon are taken on the Upper Columbia with these lures than anything else, and you can find them at the best prices and with the best selection at Hooked on Toys in Wenatchee. Get ready for action. Fish the Superbait and Superbait Plug Cut from Hooked on Toys. Your town Ford is kicking off the season with the best deals of the year. It's the Built Ford Tough Truck Event. Great power and amazing fuel economy means no compromises. And that's what you get in a truck built Ford Tough. Like the Ford F-150 with a powerful and efficient EcoBoost engine. The power you want and the economy you need. Or Ford Super Duty with its amazing 6.7 liter power stroke turbo diesel. If you're looking for power, payload, towing, economy, your town Ford's got the truck for you. Head to your town Ford in East Wenatchee. Eric. He's still going. 
Okay, this is plain enough. Holy moly! How's your drag? <laughs> you have to tighten her up. There you go. A little bit. Yeah, tension. Right. Good grab. Woo! Buddy! <laughs> Austin! <laughs> what is he? Does it? Hatchery, baby! Oh, <laughs> double good! Sweet! Golden. That thing pecked like a perch. God. What a small little bite that was. Woo, boy, man. You stuck him and he took off. Man, that was something. Crazy See fish. That, that hook just come out of there like nothing. Did it? Wow. Barbless hooks. Barbless hooks. Nice job, Dave. That was a great fight, buddy. You did well. You gotta control this boat a little bit. Yeah. Very nice. Whew. Just hold that net for me. Hey. Just point it out into the mill or what the hell is it? Austin, this is just part of the catch that we had today. We also limited on sockeye. And man, this nice bright king was the last fish that came in the boat. And we're mighty glad to see him too, weren't we? Yes, we were. <laughs> I tell you what, fishing has been tough on the Upper Columbia this year, this particular year. But you knew where to go, right below Wells Dam. You knew where to find him and you knew the baits that would work. And you put it all together in success. Success. That was terrific. That was Austin, great. I really appreciate you taking us out, showing us and giving us all the information. I'm sure my viewers are going to really appreciate what you shared with them. It's going to make them more successful when they get a chance to fish up here. Right. Good deal. I want to help everybody uh, catch some fish. You know, and Austin, before we leave here tonight, if someone wants to have a great experience just like we had this evening up here in Oakland, or at the Brewster Pool, or down in Wenatchee, or even for sturgeon, or steelhead for that matter. 
how would they get a hold of you and what's your phone number and where's your website or Facebook or what's the best okay. way to do that? It's uh, Austin's Northwest Adventures. Uh, my phone number is 509-668-0298. Uh, my website is Austin's Northwest Adventures LLC dot com. Uh, you can get a hold of me on Facebook as well. I, I put uh, uh, fish on there and little fishing reports and, and let people know what's going on and where the fishing's happening. Terrific. So. All right. Do it. You'll have a great time.